So Devstream 132 has just ended and with it our never ending quest for content. Jazz hands. Welcome on in you beautiful feckers, how you all doing? We have a lot to talk about. Now the mainline update, the next one is hopefully dropping in Warframe next week, all things going well. Update 26 will have Grendel, more huge melee 3.0 changes, Exilus mods for sidearms called Pexilus mods, Ember's rework, Vauban's rework, the vampire, the new vampire cavats, the Kuva Lich bosses, and of course their thralls and everything that comes with that system where you have to hunt and kill them because apparently they are immortal until we can figure out how to end them. But update 26 of course will have some other bits and pieces which I'll go over in detail throughout this video. First up in the dev stream we seen an early concept art from Liger Inazuka for a Hydroid deluxe skin. That's right, this is Hydroid. Now you you can tell from the art style that it is Liger in Azuka because of Neja and Nidus and so on, but this is a concept that will have its own custom Cyan Dana, which is apparently gonna look very liquidy or moist, maybe some kind of waterfall Cyan Dana. But at the end of the day, it's Hydroid, and you know how I feel about Mr. Puddleboy. You can dress up a turd, but it's still a turd, custom Cyan Dana or not. These new Pexilus mods for sidearms are more apparently about mobility and utility than anything else, which we kind of knew and expected anyway, like silencing a weapon, flight speed, accuracy, recoil, zoom, aim gliding, and so on. But reload speed apparently isn't going to be one of them. It was originally, but now it's not. We got to see the data spike or Assassin's Creed blade that we seen on our Warframe at Tenocon now has a name. It will be called the Parazon, and you're going to be able to mod it on your arsenal screen as well. It's going to be used for brutalizing enemies, capturing them, while also reviving your teammates, hacking terminals, and of course, eventually killing that Kuva Lich enemy. Now for me, the biggest bit of news for me today throughout the dev stream was the huge melee changes that we're about to see added into the game. Another step of melee 3.0. And to compensate for all of these changes, everyone can expect free boosters, free form, and of course, apparently, a legendary core for everyone as well. Now, the complete 14 pages of this dev workshop post is going live on the Warframe forums, hopefully sometime in the next day, if it's not up already, showing all of these upcoming changes, which I will go over in a more detailed video tomorrow. But the basics of what we know so far is that all weapons are getting a rebalance to damage, stats, and of course mastery shifted as well. Channeling is gone from the game. Exalted weapons can also see some kind of a rework. Manual blocking, which your melee weapon will now block 100% of incoming damage, but it's going to depend on the angle of your weapon block because each weapon will have a different blocking angle. So it's going to depend on what weapon you equip, I guess how much you're going to be able to block how effective it will be the new melee simplified combos for your weapons will be a lot like what wukong's melee is right now with his staff nothing too complicated and swinging your weapon will have a forward momentum attached to it while i would assume also adding in things like the gap closers that wukong has now there are two types of combo interruptions that you can expect with these melee changes, which will allow you to cancel a combo mid-swing simply by rolling or tactically blocking by holding down your block key and then hitting the dodge button, which is basically a side stop or I guess a backflip and so on. Channeling, like I said, is gone, but expect mods like Life Strike and others to still function in a different way. We have a new melee mechanic coming called the Lifted Status Effect, which is where you save up your combo counter meter points and spend them on a heavy slam attack or a heavy attack on the ground, and it will then hang enemies in the air like Rhino's Stomp, but the visual effects are really, really nice for this. How effective this is going to be, I have no fucking idea. Whether the radius will be bigger depending on the size of your weapon, <laughs> how much you can swing it, I'm not entirely sure. Spin to win isn't going away, but apparently spin to win was the preferred go-to melee style because of how powerful it is. But they're changing the whole melee system to rebalance it and make it so that spin to win isn't the only 
go-to option maybe give us more choices again this is something we're gonna have to test out for ourselves and see how effective i guess if you enjoy spin to win how effective it is going to be in comparison to our new melee options now certain mods like i said are being reworked and a big change to one of those mods is covert lethality is being removed completely from our melee weapons which immediately sounds fucking terrible, but it is being added to the new Parazon Data Blade or Assassin's Creed Blade, which means everyone can run with a covert lethality and not have to equip a dagger like the Sheev or Karst or a Dagger Zaw and so on in order to get the benefits of covert lethality. But again, we gotta see what way this works out. Finisher animations with the Parazon might be a lot slower compared to what you see with daggers and covert could be completely nerfed. Time will tell. Rest in pieces, my innerose homies. Wait, I'm white. Can I say homies? I can't. Ah, feck you, langers. Now, melee is about to take a serious hit for some weapons and probably buff others. The meta is more than likely going to shift and we're probably going to have to change to fit it. But they have said that damage overall is being boosted. Again, we'll be the judge of that. Grendel, like I said, is coming with the mainline update next week, complete with updated jiggle physics. He's he's a big fecker, right? He's a big old boy. And how we acquire Grendel is going to be much different to how we have acquired Warframes in the past. You're going to have to earn three special mission keys by running arbitration missions. So hopefully you enjoy arbitrations because if you don't, then you're fact. One key and one mission for each part of Grendel. If you're successful when running these missions, then of course you're going to get the Grendel part. But the missions are apparently tied to the Levarian, which is the kind of lore museum that we got with Gauss. In there, I guess we'll have hints telling us how exactly you go about getting your hands on Grendel. These missions, according to Rebecca, are said to be challenging. So whatever we have to do or whatever the mission stipulations are going to be, they have said that they are hopefully challenging to us. Again, we'll know soon enough. Grendel's big old belly will jiggle more after eating five plus enemies. So any more than five enemies and he's going to jiggle all over the place. Physics, out your fucking eyeballs. And his audio cues or his audio sounds when he eats enemies, I'm not going to lie, is pretty amazing. He even eats cats and dogs. Kuvert Lich enemies will grant us mastery just once. So if you get a Kuvert Tonkor, you get mastery just one time, regardless of how many Kuvert Tonkors you get. Similar to how kit guns and Zaws work. You can build as many as you want, but you will only get mastery that one time for that one part. Now, these weapons or Kuvert Lich contracts will be tradable with clanmates or friends who might want the weapon if you don't. So you can trade the contract of a Kuva Lich enemy to a friend and then they can go and hunt for its specific weapon. Now I'm not sure whether you're going to be able to trade these contracts for platinum. I'm kind of hoping you can't because the idea of selling a Kuva Lich contract for maybe two, three, four, five, ten thousand platinum seems really fucking wrong but i'm sure they'll elaborate a little bit more on that once the update goes live now also these generated kuvalich enemies are influenced by the warframe that kills them that's what kind of baits them or makes them so we've seen ones generated from grendel who killed them which had abilities based of of grendel while also kind of looking around the kind of aesthetics of what grendel is while also having some of rhino's abilities in the mix as well on top of that they also had these oddities like some of the kuva liches will have a fear of children or a night by nature or a bad balance and so on so there's going to be some giggle aspect in there as well enlarged genitals now these enemies like i said are also immortal so normal damage won't kill them but the parazon blade the data blade will be modded with new immortal mods which are tied to Orokin and Kuva mythology. So they have some lore behind them. These immortal mods need to be tested out first off before you can take them up against the Kuva Liches on some of the Kuva Liches thralls or minions in order to see if these immortal mods can actually kill that Kuva Lich. So you're gonna have some trial and error to perform before figuring out how to kill these new boss enemies. Apparently the Kuvalich minions will have dialogue or certain phrases or quotes 
that match their master and will say some of these phrases which are tied to these immortal mods but you're going to need to figure out how you go about combining or in what order do you combine your immortal mods to match those phrases used now another new mechanic coming with these bosses is the idea of thievery the lich will influence a region you will see like red kind of blood globs or globules is that a word i don't know if it is you will see these kind of red areas on the star chart and this will show that it has been influenced by a kuva lich and his thralls are basically stealing from this area and hoarding resources eventually once you figure out how to kill them you will get all or most of that hoarded resource pile to keep for yourself now eventually we will have the option to convert these kuva lich bosses as companions by purifying them of that kuva strain then they will apparently appear and fight beside you when you need them the most and when i say when you need them the most they will probably just be random as all hell they will show up on hydron while there's a saren in your squad killing everything and that lich just will run around in circles like a fucking headless chicken now these kuva lich bosses will have finishers that can be done on your warframe to eventually kill you as well while you're fighting them one of these finishers was a kind of bane backbreaker another one was a blade to the face another one was your warframe being picked up and thrown across the room up against a wall so a nice way for you to go out as well but the most important thing to take from these Kuvalich enemies is that they are tailored enemies designed specifically to match your game to suit your playstyle and hopefully give you a bit of a challenge while also giving you new weapons to aim for that are better than any of the weapons in the game right now with higher mod capacity special elemental damage traits and so on like a toxin based tonkor or maybe an electric based grakata and so on and like i said they will be coming with this mainline update hopefully next week we just need to figure out how you go about killing them with the help of those immortal mods which we don't know how to get yet they didn't tell us it's a secret but apparently lore will be attached to it so that's pretty much devstream 132 but we did also see a concept for different imperian ships that you're going to be able to get your hands on so there's not just one railjack there's going to be different designs or different types Arbitration rewards are also being changed a little bit with some new additions and of course a new Ayatan sculpture is being added into the mix in the arbitration store. Nightwave Intermission Part 2 is up from Monday I believe. The Vasca Kavat is the name of the Vampire Kavat and the Vasco Kavat Echo Lore and Vasca Curative are apparently items needed to eventually tame or gain one of these Vampire Kavats coming with the mainline update. But let me know in the comment section below what you think of everything you've seen in Devstream 132, what you liked the look of and what you didn't like the look of. Do me a huge favour, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video or don't if you didn't. Subscribe for more Warframe and as always, thanks very much for watching.